Welcome to the Team Carter Family Adventures Podcast. Podcast. I'm David. I'm Jen. And we are coming to you uh, this evening from our Community Street Studios, as always. Welcome. And um, You're you. Welcome. Exotic Rock Hill, South Carolina. And uh, yeah, we are uh, doing a couple of things. The kids are cleaning their room right now, so you're probably going to hear them combusting in here at some point. Uh, I told them explicitly they were not supposed to come in here, but we'll see how that goes. Um, if you joined us last episode, you'll know that we unboxed some fan art. Thank uh-huh. you, Bernicorn 3D Printing Printing Designs, uh, Adam McDonough, for the fan art. Um, if you want to hear about it, you're going to have to go back and re-listen to that episode to find out what we unboxed, but it was wonderful. Thank you so much again. And we also recapped uh, our adventures in Moab, Utah on our cross-country road trip. Road trip. Uh, Moab was incredible. Thank you, Utah, for that. That was cool. Um, and so tonight, we are going to continue on our cross-country adventure, and we're going to talk about Colorado. Colorado, that's right. So we're excited about that. Um Colorado or Colorado? Colorado. Colorado, if you're wearing a cool hat that has emphasis on the rad. Um, it's the raddest. Um, Colorado is Spanish for... I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just assuming it was Spanish. Is it Spanish for something? Uh, Colorado. Spanish. Colorado didn't know much about it before we went out there, and it was a brief visit, but it was great. Yeah. Colorado is of Spanish origin, meaning colored red. The name was applied to the Colorado River because of the red sandstone soil of the region. It came into use for the entire territory after the discovery of gold in the Pikes Peak region. In 1861, Congress chose Colorado as the name for the territory. Nice. There you go. Like, I didn't know who Kit Carson was until we went out to the west and we were listening to all those old timey uh kid songs about davy crockett and the war of 1812 uh, there's a lot of them and we were just listening to them one was about kit carson and kit i was carson, like who's? kit carson i was like who's kit carson never given the country strong yeah never heard of that guy and now i know who he is he's from colorado and then there's of and course the classic the one that everybody knows born on a mountaintop in tennessee greatest man in the land of the free knew every bush do every tree killed him a bar when he was only three uh fill in the blank you're singing that to yourself right now i know you are of course it's davy crockett davy crockett only in our house we sing grady grady carter king of the wild frontier so we do that then then there was uh i don't even know how you would describe that genre folk is that would, would patriotic that be folk American music, American folk tunes Americana? No, Maybe. it's not Americana. Americana is like rock, right? I mean, I guess. I don't know. They're folk songs that also teach you history. So mm-hmm. anyway, they're fun to sing, and if, you learn something. Too. Yeah, it's a whole history lesson in a song. Mm-hmm. Go find Kit Carson; it'll tell you all about the West. So <laughs> we went from Moab, Utah. After, Moab, Utah. Uh, it's been. It's tripped me a little while now, having to go back to my memory. But went from Moab, Utah to Colorado Springs um, to stay with some good friends of ours. And Moab, the we drove driving from Moab to to Colorado Springs was about six hours. It was about seven and a half, eight. Seven and a half, eight due hours. Due to stopping, and we took the scenic route. We took the southern route through all the small mountain towns. Yep. Remember that? We um drove through the Black Canyon. Uh huh. Which is not quite as not as big as the Grand Canyon, but still very impressive in and of itself. Black Canyon National Park. It's beautiful. Less crowded. It has a name. Black Canyon of the of, of the Gunnison. Black Canyon of the Gunnison. Yeah. Because the Gunnison is the river mm-hmm. that flows at the bottom. Um, so it's incredible. It's in um, Montrose, Colorado, and so if you can imagine, we're going from the desert terrain of Utah, like the red sandstone rocks, cliffs, whatever, of um, Moab, and we're driving, what would you call that, like a high 
plains, like a high plains, high plains, right? Coming into Colorado, and then we're going over the Colorado Rockies. So, and our friend, thank you so much, Mark and Carrie, for suggesting this. We they there were three ways to go. One was to go like kind of north through Colorado Junction and go um, over to like Denver and then come down to Colorado Springs. Um, but that was probably the fastest route, like six and a half hours. Um, but he told us to go the seven and a half hours because that extra hour was going to be totally worth it taking the scenic route. And man, did we see some scenes. It was great. Did we see some scenic scenes? Let me tell you. It was beautiful. So Western Colorado is, um, it's just beautiful, giant, green, everything's green, uh, mountains, I guess it starts off like rolling hills, right? But quickly it goes into the Colorado Rockies, which are huge, which fondly reminded us of the Andes in South America. But it's just like ginormous. There are um, small mountain towns. Everything's family friendly, local, it looks like. Like there weren't a lot of like chain stores, but it was like a lot of mom and pop shop kind of stuff. Um, yeah, we we passed a sign for YWAM Colorado and Cimarron Valley, Cimarron, uh-huh. Cimarron. and um, that was gorgeous and unexpected because we didn't know that was in the middle of nowhere, but it was it was gorgeous. So these windy mountain roads take you through all these tiny towns, and um, Black Canyon was on the way, so we stopped and saw that, and um, yeah, what did you think of Black Canyon? It was it was impressive. Yeah, Black Canyon was amazing. It was, it. We were pretty far into our trip, and we had a deadline, so honestly, we didn't get to spend as much time there as we would have liked. Um, that was one of those days. Like we, I just feel like that day. It's a lot of driving that day. Yes, and there was a lot to see. There was a lot to see, and the scenery kept changing, so you wanted to see more. Because, and it was yeah, yeah, and it was it was some pretty intense mountain driving. So that day was pretty intense. I remember that. Uh huh. But Black Canyon Gunnison was beautiful. Um, we had had just about enough. I remember that day. We had had just about enough of gift shops. That was the day. <laughs> yeah, I that forgot went to a gift that. shop, and I was like, "Oh my dear lord! If I don't get these kids out of here, mm-hmm. um, you know, you go to so many national parks, and basically there's the same stuff in the gift shop. And I just like to see what what what's there but the kids of course want like seven different things you gotta be like nope 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 put that back put that down put that back put that and down you gotta and you gotta go in the gift shops to get your national passport uh national passport parks stamp anyway mm-hmm. so you gotta go in there for that yeah. so that day we're, we're a little on edge um but that, it was really cool it was also extremely hot Oh, that's uh, true. Yeah, you don't think about that. It is still a high desert. And it was like 105. It was super hot. You got to stay well hydrated. Um, but the hike was not that bad for, for us. We, we walked from the visitor center and walked maybe a fourth of a mile. Yeah, a quarter mile down, yeah. Um, to the overlook where you can basically look down into the canyon. And it's like sheer black cliffs with vultures flying around or eagles whatever they were fly, yeah, flying around it was like something off of Star Wars it was, it was amazing and then there's like a green river at the bottom and it's gorgeous and the terrifying jade, yeah, at black the same cliffs. time imagine sheer 500 feet black cliffs with a jade green river snaking its way through the middle of it at the bottom and you can see the river slightly better than the river at the bottom of the Grand Canyon because the Grand smaller, Canyon is massive yeah, but it's just a smaller canyon, yeah. um, still beautiful and actually fun fact our friends Mark and Carrie that we caught up with in Colorado Springs a couple hours later um, and we spent the night with them in Colorado Springs this past weekend so um, what is it is it, it's now August this trip was in July but um this past weekend in August, they went back to Black Canyon because Carrie had never been, and they hiked all the way down into the bottom of the canyon and saw the the river, like, you know, I don't know if they took the shoes off in the river or what, but um, touched the river and then hiked back up out of the canyon. She said it took seven and a half hours, and the first she said the first three hours were super intense because getting into the canyon, it was like a lot of rock scrambling, a lot of um, scree, so like, you know, rocks are falling, and you're trying not to like fall into the canyon more as you're hiking down. And um, she said by the end of it, although it was gorgeous and it was really pretty at the bottom of the canyon, 
she said climbing up out of it because it was so steep was like, please just get me out of this canyon. So if you're looking for a fun marriage building and possibly strenuous hike for seven and a half, eight hours, hike the Black Canyon. Not sure what trail specifically they did. But, um, she did some pictures, and it's it's gorgeous. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm sure it's incredible. Um, but we enjoyed it from the top. <laughs> one of the, it's one we of the things about the about the trip. I said this before, but like we had to say no, either say no outright to some really cool things, or didn't get to spend nearly enough time at some other really cool things. And, and Black Canyon is one of those things. It's you know you could easily do, easily do a day, very easily do a you know significant day hike there. Mm-hmm. Um, several different options for that and we just did not have time for that and we drove Um, through uh, is it the University of Western Colorado which was uh, in Gunnison, Colorado we drove through Gunnison which has the university which which is where the university was I wouldn't really drive through the university though but uh, we did drive through Gunnison right but just small western looking town I say western looking just imagine you know like almost Dodge City, Kansas. We sat. Kind of towns. We sat in the Colorado Rockies for about an hour in traffic because there was a rock slide and they were mm-hmm. clearing off the rock slide. Thank you, workers, for doing that. And so we got to see, you know, like beautiful aspen trees and also a rock slide. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we drove through. I remember coming through the Rockies and at one point there was the blue mesa reservoir which looks like a blue gem in the middle of the mountains because uh i don't know it's just beautiful like you come upon this like body of water and then i'm trying to go in order of yeah. what we saw what we saw them and then we went over the continental divide at monarch pass that was a big deal how high is we thirteen thousand feet how high is monarch pass? was it thirteen thousand feet we're gonna look that up um, but there is a sky lift or a chair lift that you can ride and a little gift shop um, restaurant Monarch Pass right there. is 11,312 feet or let's see that's two miles and just a little bit over two miles um didn't have time of elevation. Didn't have time to ride the chairlift or go to the restaurant or the gift shop, but we still took the picture of the sign. I haven't seen that picture by the way. It's it's there. It's somewhere. Yeah. I'll post it. Um, what's interesting about that is we followed a hiker's um, we followed the homemade wonderlust, shout out Dixie Jessica Mills, um, her Continental Divide Trail hike. And we remember when she went over Monarch Pass, and we were just thinking, because it was kind of hard to breathe anyway, being that high up in the Rockies, and we're just driving a car. And I was like, I can't believe people actually walk this. Like, it was kind of incredible. Yeah. Um, and that's that's where the trail crosses over and stops, is at that Monarch Pass. So, so that was pretty amazing. Yeah, to think that people have hiked these really tall mountains. Yeah, so that was very cool. And from there, we, you, it's kind of a, a very gradual. You stay up in the mountains for quite a while. But it's, it, it's a gradual down towards, towards Colorado Springs. We're going to pause. Let's see our room and see how clean it is. I will. So say what you just said again. <laughs> no. Update on the kids' room. The kids' room is, what, 75% cleaner? It's, it's clean enough for them to go to sleep. How about that? Right. All their clothes and toys are up off the floor so they went to bed jen just said she doesn't want to repeat it <laughs> say, say, say it again i said you know what was scary about colorado was thinking about how many mountain lions there are out there <laughs> not that not that we saw any mountain lions while we were out there but just thinking about there was that who was that one we guy just don't who, um, have mountain lions where we live and i just was thinking about was that one guy Hikers with mountain lions. Guy strangles. Remember that guy a few years back? What? Guy strangles a mountain lion. What? With. Guy chokes a mountain lion to death. No way. Colorado. This is from 2019. Colorado runner chokes a mountain lion to death. I'm trying to find the, the, the shortest possible version over here. What? 
Oh my god. See, those are terrifying. They're huge. Posted at a mountain trail entrance near Denver after a jogger strangled a mountain lion to death in self-defense on Monday. The juvenile cougar attacked the man from behind, biting and clawing his body in the foothills of Horsetooth Mountain, 70 miles northwest of Denver. Authorities say the man strangled the wild animal with his bare hands and was taken to a hospital with injuries that were serious but not life-threatening. Mountain lion attacks have caused fewer than 20 deaths in the U.S. in the past 100 years. Officials say 16 known attacks have occurred in Colorado since 1990. But don't let that d deter you from going to Colorado because... Don't be deterred. I mean... Or else you might be deterred. Man, that's... That's crazy. I'm glad he's okay, though. The question that everybody wants to know, did he keep... Was he allowed to keep the mountain lion that he strangled? Did he keep its fur and, like, turn into, like, a bedroom rug or something? Because that's what I would have done. <laughs> that would have been the move. Just a constant reminder of, like, I killed that with my bare hands. Well, you gotta wonder, you know... Did he get in trouble with 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 fish and game? No. Was that a thing? No, because it was out of self defense. If an animal is attacking you, I'm pretty sure that gives you license to kill it in self defense. I mean, if an animal is attacking my babies, you better believe I'm gonna kill it. Oh, I, I, I mean, I would too, no doubt. But I'm just saying, just saying, like, uh, did Colorado Fish and Game? Did he have to pay a fine? For not having a, a mountain lion tag, you know? I don't know, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Man. Well. All right, let's talk about something. This is this is a little off subject. Wait, wait, wait. Can we finish talking about Colorado? Yeah, we'll, we'll get back there. We'll get back there. But this is, a, this, is, this is a parallel thing. Okay. Van life. Okay. We have reached the peak. We, not generally, society... Van Lyke has reached the peak. I'll say it differently. Van Life has peaked. Okay. The whole hashtag Van Life culture has peaked. Now. According to. According to me. According to David. According to me. Ladies and gentlemen. We're over it. Jen and I are over it. Are you over it? I don't want to speak for you. I think the. The point that our family has come to is we really like having our house to come back to. Yes. So I don't think for our family we would sell everything we own. I might eat these words later. Never say never because you know how that goes. But I don't think we would sell our house and all of our possessions, move to a van, and travel around in a van. I or think even into want, a schoolie. Even into a schoolie. Right, because we, we, we had a schoolie, a little minor schoolie obsession there for a while, too. Because we've talked about in past episodes about how we went through our, you know, pros and cons of buying a camper and why that didn't pan out. And then we went through a schooly phase. And then we went through a van life phase. Yes, as a reminder, we rented a couple of different... I'll just very quickly not redo the whole episode, but... Very quickly. We rented a couple of... Uh, a number of campers a few different times over the course of about a year and a half. Highly recommend it if you um, want to try it out. It's a really good idea. It's way cheaper than buying one of these bad boys. Um... And we may rent one again at some point in the future. Sure. But, but that experience, I did it enough times to know and had to know that I do not want to own one. Don't want to own one. Yes. After doing. Nor would I want to live in one part time or semi part time. Uh -huh. So sorry. Nor would I want to live in one full time or semi full time. We just enjoy going places and traveling, and then also coming home. It's the going. And coming home for us, it makes it special. So, um, what made you think of that? I saw a postal. Oh, okay. Somebody was selling a, a, a Volkswagen Westie. Um, now, is van life popular right now? Absolutely, yes, it is. And let me tell you, those wrapped vans they got that you can rent. We saw so many of those. So many of them. So, that's something we haven't talked about, how many of those we saw. Yeah, Those I mean, so common. Rent this van, you know. Rent me. Oh yeah. So so if you hey, if you even want to try out van life for like a weekend trip because you want to try it out, like please go and support one of these van camping experience businesses because I mean you can find so many of them, especially in Colorado, especially in Arizona and especially Utah. In Utah. Yeah. Um, 
They were everywhere, man. They were everywhere. So, I mean, there are no shortage of camper Before vans Before you for drop you rent. $30,000, $40,000 on one of these things, right. you may want to take a weekend and just see how you like it. Yeah. Um, not that our experience with it was bad. It just gets old. Not unlike camping in a tent gets old, you know. Um, and it was so much fun. We did road trip Arizona for one week in a uh, Eurovan, and it was so much fun, just me and David, for like five days, and then we gave it back. <laughs> we didn't have to drive it we, all the way home. Yeah, we were happy to give it back. Yeah. We were, we were more, you know, we don't have to take care of it. We just get to enjoy it. And would I go with that company again? Absolutely. Absolutely. It was a great experience. Um, awesome people, awesome vans, and I was happy not to own one. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, from a, just from a accounting standpoint, it's good to, to not have yet another depreciating asset, right? So. so. Anyway, I saw that. I just feel like and van life has almost become kind of a meme at this point, right? Um, well, our joke. Well, never mind. It was our joke. Never mind. What's our joke? Our joke is somebody would like fart in the van, and then that would just be like 90 percent of our. 90, well, that's ninety percent of van this life. This is our family friendly podcast. So someone would pass gas or break wind and you'd be in trapped. our van, and we would just be you'd trapped, be trapped like in a Dutch there oven. And, or, or our other favorite, someone would just start coughing because they'd be sick, and then you'd be trapped in there with like recycled cough air for mm-hmm. you know a while. Mm-hmm. So it's all fun and games until someone gets the stomach virus. Right? Stomach virus, or it's a rainy day, you can't get out, you can't go anywhere. It's like uh, 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 uh. <laughs> so the saving grace for our trip was that we could get out of the van at the end of the day you know, to a hotel that's true or in this case in Colorado a friend's house which Colorado is very generous house, of them very incredibly generous of them so anyway van life is peaked you heard it here first folks the whole hashtag van life thing maybe you've never heard of van life before if you, if you haven't I would encourage you to get on get on the interwebs and look it up, and there's all kind of, all kind of stuff about it. Or if people you're a are paying. Lifer, if you're a van lifer and you think we're totally wrong, you can. You can message us at, very nicely. At a, message us. <laughs> us an email at at Team Carter Family Adventures at gmail dot com, yep. or you can message us on the Anchor app or Spotify, or you can look mm-hmm. us up on Facebook at Team Carter Family Adventures. But if page. you're rude, you'll get blocked. You'll get blocked. Just, you just got to make that. <laughs> or if the, you're a robot and you're, you're a sending robot, spam messages, if you're we, from, you will get blocked. If you're from Russia, um, don't be Russian. So, yeah. If That's you a joke. We the, love Russians. I mean, there's, you know, people spending just wild amounts of money on these really, really nice van conversions that are basically mid-size RVs. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, people, yeah, spend your money on what you want, I guess. But it's just it's just not for us, I guess. Our little Honda Odyssey did just fine, making it over the Rockies. We were really impressed. No problems there. Had lots of high ground clearance. Not that we were off-roading, but um, in that section with all the rock slide, it was kind of like, you know, the road was all tore up. And we did mm-hmm. just fine. No issues. No issues whatsoever, praise God. And... Um, yeah, so then we're going over the Colorado Rockies. We went through Buena Vista, which is gorgeous. We had a friend who used to work out there as a whitewater rafting guide um, for a couple of summers, I think. And it is absolutely gorgeous out there if you ever get a chance to go out there. We decided that we would probably go back when our kids are teenagers. Maybe raft the Arkansas River, maybe. Um, it's, the, it's, it's the Arkansas River. But it's in Colorado. Colorado. And the Colorado River runs through Moab, Utah, and down through the Grand Canyon. So, but it might originate in Colorado. I don't really know. I'm not looking at a map currently. Um, so, yeah. Um, do we pass any other points of interest between Buena Vista and Colorado Springs that we should mention? Hmm. It seemed the further Just we got think. east, all of a sudden... Uh, the cities got huge, and you were like, "Oh, this is where all the people live in Colorado." Yeah, the further we, the further east we got. Yeah. Um, we didn't actually make it into Denver on our travels, but we kind were of skirt around outside, outside of, of it. Yeah. yeah, in the Littleton area, and um, you're just like, "Wow, there's a lot of people here," as opposed to you know. Yeah, Colorado Springs felt like it was beautiful first off, but it felt like any other major metropolitan area. 
Which, because, because that's what it is. Because that's what it is. Surprise, surprise. Major, yeah, it's a major um, metropolitan area. So yeah, so we we stayed with friends, and when we got in, we had we had dinner with them. We went to um, a park that was across the street from there uh, where they live, and it was um, a lot of green spaces. Like there are a lot of people there, but there are also a lot of parks, from what I got. Um, and oh yeah, people are really into biking. <laughs> Lots of bike lanes and yep. stuff. Um, and yeah, so we went to a park and oh, there was a double rainbow because it rained and they were like, this is really weird weather we're having. It doesn't normally rain this much, but, um, double rainbow. but yeah, what does it mean? And we saw a double rainbow. It was fun. And the, so the next day we, we ended up spending the night with them and our original plan before we got on this trip was that we would wake up and just immediately drive to Kansas after we said goodbye and had breakfast with them. But we decided we were really tired and we needed a zero day. So we went with Carrie and Mark to Roxborough State Park. Roxborough State Park. Which was Mark's favorite state park when he was a kid, I think. And uh, it's in almost to Denver. It's about maybe, what, an hour north of Colorado Springs or maybe yeah. an hour and a half? It's in between Colorado Springs and Denver. And it's beautiful. Um, he took us there not only because it was his childhood favorite, but because he also said it was a little less populated than Garden of the Gods. Um, and so he was like, if you've seen Arches National Park, you should come with us to the state park. So we're like, okay. And, um, it was really nice because we ended up getting pretty much a whole state park with some really cool red rocks to ourselves. Like, there was a heat advisory that day, so there wasn't that many people out. And, uh... So if you go out and it's in the summer, you should definitely bring lots of water. And we brought not enough. Not enough. <laughs> we, <laughs> not enough. We brought four or five liters, but we forgot that we weren't adjusted to the altitude, and we didn't necessarily get sick, but um, we just forgot that you need to drink a lot of water to stay hydrated. But luckily, our friends who live there in Colorado were over prepared, and they go hiking there all the time and so they had extra water for us to have which was very generous of them and they they brought ice packs that's a pro tip bring some ice packs on your trip um and we we were able to cool off the kids with us some ice packs and extra water and um they like dumping water over their heads that was fun and uh yeah it's beautiful we end up hiking uh, the mountain at Roxborough State Park. For some reason, I thought we were going to hike around the park, but it was actually up the mountain, so I was not necessarily prepared for that. But it was a lot of fun. It was a beautiful hike. Well, we hadn't acclimated to the... It was incredible, it and was we incredible. needed it because we have been trapped in the car. Oh, yes. Really terribly physically active. But it kicked our butts. But it, it, it kicked our butts. Yeah, but it kicked <laughs> our butts. <laughs> we're, we're, you know, we weren't... Acc- we're, we're still at about a mile of elevation. Um... Which, so let's talk about elevation for a minute. So, uh, I haven't experienced that yeah, since if Peru. You, if you, if, <laughs> so just some basics. All right. As you, as the elevation increases, it gets harder to breathe, right? I'm sure you guys know that. No surprises there. But what you don't think about is what getting harder, what it getting harder to breathe really means. So if you're walking up a flight of stairs, you feel like, whew, whew, that was, that, that was, you have a hard time catching your breath. It's not to say that you're that, that you get tired faster. You just have a hard time catching your breath. You're not running up a flight of stairs. How about that? Yeah. So we're also not running up this mountain or down. We we were. <laughs> I felt like we were kind of treading through molasses. Like yeah. Your body's just working harder to get oxygen to your brain. Um. So a way to combat um, not having altitude sickness. There are these tablets you can buy. Which we didn't have any of those, but you can also drink a lot of water, drink a lot of liquids. Um, at night, night we had some hot tea um, before we went to bed, um, and basically just stay hyd- well hydrated, rest, and um, yeah. Usually by what two or three days you're over it if you getting adjusted to the altitude. Like if we would have stayed there probably like a week, we would have been fine. I think so. Um, but just that 24 or 48 hours, it was a little bit like, whoa. Um, but yeah, it was it was a beautiful hike. 
highly recommend the state park, Roxboro State Park. Um, yeah, the hike is just beautiful. I, I can't even, I was trying to figure out what to call the, um, the landscape around us because it wasn't necessarily like a desert, but it wasn't mountains. What would you call that? Like, I don't, I don't it wasn't know. desert, but was it mountains? Where at? Where at? Uh, at Roxborough State. Yeah, it was like high desert. It, it was, was like a high, high desert. desert. It was like okay. Red Rocks. That's what you would call that. The famous Red Rocks Amphitheater is in Colorado Springs. Okay. So like a red, not that uh, Red Rocks in the same way that Moab and Grand Canyon had Red Rocks. But there was more trees and grass. Yeah. In Colorado Springs, it wasn't Moab. Moab was like the surface of surface of Mars. Yeah, it was more like scrubby, and you could yeah, you felt like there were trees there. There was more shade for sure. Um, still 100 degrees though <laughs> so make sure you take lots of water more water than you think you need um, and so after our hike um, and we kind of had like a picnic lunch out there we ended up going into like the Littleton golden area of Denver and we went to this really nice gelato place and got post celebratory gelato Mm-hmm. As you do when you have small kids. And As you do. You need to bribe them to get to the car. So you're like, if you keep walking, we'll get ice cream. Um, so, yeah, that was really great to catch up with our friends. Mark and Carrie, thank you so much for your hospitality. I'm going to broadcast your hospitality over the airwaves. If you're in Colorado Springs and you need a place to stay, Mark and Carrie would love to have you. Carrie's a wonderful cook and... They're just wonderful friends. And so we're very grateful for their friendship, and it was great to reconnect. So, yeah, what else do we want to say about Colorado? We wish, like like the other places we went, we wish we would have had at least a week there. Colorado is one of those places, um, I can't say this about everywhere we went. There was like maybe two places, three places, where we got there and we were like, okay. I could potentially see us. This living is here. why people move here. Yeah, I and could love potentially it. see us living here. It just, you know, maybe that was because it was a larger metropolitan area, which is kind of what we're used to here. It just felt pretty familiar. Um, so, so the other places, so Flagstaff, Arizona, was like a cool college town, mountain town. That was cool. Starkville, Mississippi, again, small, small little college town. And then, There's a theme here with these small college know, towns. And then Colorado Springs. Not really a college town necessarily, but... I'm not, sure there is a college there. I'm sure there's probably a couple. Right. I mean, the um, Air Force Air Force Academy is, is there. The focus on the family headquarters is there. Just zooming in on the family, just focusing. <laughs> Getting laser focused on the family. Um, uh, and there, it's Pikes Peak and the mountains are overlooking the Pikes city. Pikes Peak overlooks like a, like a giant behemoth guardian over the city um this is very cool very cool place we we would go back for we sure we would go back for sure and i'm sure it's a whole different kind of feel it's if funny. you go in the winter too on the way out we kept finding things to do finding reasons to stop oh yeah so uh, it's like treading through freaking molasses to get out of colorado yeah. we kept finding places to stop so like we, we you gotta go to rei while we went and spent like an hour in rei because you might as well and then uh and then we stopped at chick-fil-a on the way out <laughs> well, i think we we're just so happy to see all these yeah. familiar things we're like yes um ooh, farmer's markets Ooh, yeah. like you know parts and whatever and then we skedaddled on to Kansas. Yep, and that's that's a whole adventure because you're going through these, like, you know, the mountains of Colorado, and all of a sudden it just levels off, and you get to flat Kansas. Yeah. Um, are we going to talk about Kansas in this episode? Because we've gone about... We can. What, 40 minutes now? Mm, I think we're, like, 35 minutes. Let's keep rolling. Okay, so I guess we'll talk about Kansas in this episode. So, Kansas, all right. So, we... Because we shopped a little bit at REI and got Chick-fil-A um, on our adventure, it, like I said, seemed like it took forever to get actually into Kansas. The original plan was to go across Kansas in one day, but we tried our hardest and at the end of the day found ourselves, um, after that second night, 
in Colorado. So the second night in Colorado, we were so tired. Just to give you a picture of how tired we were and how satisfying that hike was. We, um, after we ate at the gelato place for ice cream, that was like our dinner. We looked across the parking lot of this shopping center and there was like a, what was it? A home two suites or something. Yeah. And so we were like, we're staying there tonight. So we just crossed the parking lot and crashed. Um, pretty hard because we were all so tired. But anyway, so the next morning we get up, we get out of there around like lunchtime, like we said, and we made it as far as Hayes, Kansas. Um, had we known something about Hayes, Kansas, we might not have stayed there. Um, very small, quaint little town right off the interstate. Um, we shopped at the Goodwill, as you do when you pass a really good, well, good, Goodwill, <laughs> uh, off the interstate. And yeah, that was that my birthday. That was my birthday. Yes, it was my birthday. So it was Jen's birthday. That, that was my also birthday. made Colorado special. Was that was Jen's birthday? Right. Jen turned twenty-two. I'm just kidding. Thirty-three. <laughs> turned twenty-two plus a couple of years. Plus eleven. Turned thirty-three. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. I'm thirty-four now, babe. I'm just trying to take those years back from you, baby. I'm 34. Trying to keep those miles. I look like I'm 22, but I'm actually 34. The heart. That's what he means. That's what he means. I'm going to stop talking. So, (laughs) it was her birthday in Colorado, and for her birthday, we stayed at a. So, side tip. Side tip. 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 Get ready. If you got a pen and pencil, this one, you're going to want to take notes. This is a writer downer. Um, So, if you are looking for. If you're in a place, right, you're looking for a, a nice hotel, and I'm talking about you want something, like you want a treat. It's your wife's birthday, you know, and you're on the road. You want to treat somebody to something. Well, you don't necessarily want to go full on five star because maybe that's just, maybe, maybe there's nothing around like that. Maybe you got some kids with you. Maybe that's just not your scene. Uh, don't overlook the ex- extended stay Home to sweets. Oh, uh, yeah. Those we're, kinds of places. We're not sponsored by them, but we would love we, to be. We would love to be. Don't overlook those kinds of places. They're a little bit on the pricier side compared to, like, the Motel 6. But they're not as good, but, but they're not going to be as pricey as, say, you know, the downtown Marriott, that kind of thing. Um, anyway, very nice. Lots of, lots of facilities. Probably the nicest pool we found on the whole trip was at this home, too. Saltwater pool, right? Yeah, yeah saltwater pool. At a home too. The beds were um, really plush, really yeah, comfy. Yeah. They had the full on. It was like a living room set up. They had a full kitchen. Yep. It was nice. It was very nice. For you to extend your stay, if mm-hmm. you need to extend your stay. Mm-hmm. We've had some. I've had some. I've had some some clients use them in between housing situations. For, for yeah. That kind of stuff, and that's what they're for. But they also serve the purpose of just needing a nicer place to stay. You know, Nicer than your standard Holiday Inn Express. Nothing wrong with Holiday Inn Express. We stayed at a couple of them. Nothing wrong with that. But just it was a little bit. It, it was an opportunity to to uh, to treat ourselves. It was a little bit nicer for Jen's birthday. And I I thank you. I was thankful for a good night's sleep the night before, the night of my birthday, e- birthday eve, if you will. And then I was really thankful for the hike and the time with our friends that we spent a whole extra day in Colorado. So for me, I felt like. Yeah, this is my three-day celebration of birthdays. Yeah. I don't know if Mark and Carrie are ever going to listen to this, but we love those guys. Uh, it was one of those conversations where you feel like you could just talk to, you could just talk forever with someone for hours and uh, pick up where things. you left off. Yeah, as I get, yeah. well, we haven't seen in uh, it's the first time ever meeting Mark, but we hadn't seen Carrie in gosh seven eight years. No, like she came to Charleston and visited. It's like twenty sixteen. It's been like four years. No, babe. It's been like six years. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's been a while. But it was good to reconnect. It was good to reconnect. Good to reconnect. Um, so we, we're coming into Kansas, and we decide we're going to get barbecue. Billy Sims Barbecue, which is a... A chain. Oklahoma chain. Right. Started in Oklahoma, I think. Uh, yeah, Billy also, Sims is a football player for Oklahoma. Yes. Back in the day. Yes. Uh, I think he won the Heisman. Possibly back in the 70s. Play for the Detroit Lions in the NFL for a period of time. And now the man makes really good barbecue. And he makes some delicious barbecue. And so that was in Hayes, Kansas. So we went and got barbecue for dinner, which is always, you know, when in doubt, that is really maybe what your wife wants for her birthday, <laughs> is a good night a, a good night of uninterrupted sleep. 
Um, especially if y'all have small kids, um, she doesn't want to cook or clean for herself. Every year, I feel like that's just what I ask for on my birthday. And that's what I usually get. So we, <laughs> thank you, David. So we had barbecue, so I didn't have to cook or clean. And then we decided to go back to our hotel, which was just, I think, a Holiday Inn Express. But it was still lovely, nonetheless. Um, we got into this routine of, like, I would do laundry. The kids would play with David in the pool, get really tired. And then we'd all go to bed by, like, 9 o'clock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was fabulous. Um, and... We had uh, a surprising turn of events so, that woke so, us up at 10.30 at night. So I was sitting in bed on, on my computer doing some work, and I heard what sounded like intermittent strong breezes. We're on the third floor. It sounded like strong breezes outside. Coming through the air conditioning. And so I said, let me go. And I stopped listening for a second. I was like, what is that? Walked to the window. Pull the window curtain, or the shades back. <laughs> and pull the curtain back. And what do I see outside? But I see there's one of those light poles, the light at the top of it, swinging back and forth, like whoosh, whoosh, directly whoosh, in front whoosh, of our window. Whoosh, whoosh. I'm talking about like not like wobbling just a little bit. I'm talking about whipping back and forth. Like, is that gonna fall over? There was trash blowing everywhere. I mean, I said, well, you know, let me turn my phone on and see, uh, see what's happening out there. Turn my phone on. Sure enough, as soon as it came on, we got, you know, the the. The, the storm alert, weather alert. So alerts were going off on our phone, so, but they were not going off in the hotel. So, so this was, there was a tornado warning. Not a tornado watch, but a tornado warning. Warning being the more serious of the two. So I said, okay, well, let me turn on the TV and see if I can get some weather. Turn on the TV. About 20 miles away, there was a tornado on the ground. Um, the town north of Hayes, I can't remember the name of the town, but... 20 miles north of Hayes. 20 miles north of Hayes. But Kansas is so flat that you can see. Like, we could see the cloud and see the see the funnel way off in the distance. And so I went downstairs. I put on clothes. I said, Jen, put on some clothes. Of course, Jen was up by this point. I said, Jen, put on clothes. And, and the kids were still asleep, thankfully. Jen, put on clothes. Let's, let's you know, just in case we got to make a run for it or something. So I walked downstairs just to the lobby, just to get a feel. Like, what, you know, should I be doing something? Should I be running? Were, were people in the lobby? Yeah, you know, what's happening? Were people in the hallway? There were there were nobody in the hallway. There were people in the stairwell because I didn't take the elevator because I figured, you know what? In a tornado warning, the power might go out. I might get stuck in the elevator. Let me take the stairs. <laughs> Seemed like a reasonable idea. Thank you for not getting stuck in the elevator. Seemed like a reasonable idea. Um, so did that. Took the stairs down there. People, There was some, one family in the stairwell. I said, hey, how you doing? Sorry, let me step over here. Walked down, got to the to the, uh, to the the lobby. There were a lot of people checking. This was like 10 o'clock at night. There were a ton of people checking into the hotel. I don't know if people were fleeing the tornado, people were just coming off the interstate or what. But there was there was there there were two families in the lobby. You know, like kids were just barely awake. Mom looked pissed holding a baby. <laughs> uh, you know, Dad was walking around back and forth on his phone. I was like, oh, man, should we be down here? So I kind of walked through. I talked to the guy at the front desk and said, "Hey, man, tornado warning." We don't we don't get many of those. We what, do we, what do we do? Should we should we do anything? He was like, "No, you know, it's twenty miles away. They say it's moving northeast, which is kind of the opposite direction of the of where we were. So we're not really worried about it." I said, "Okay." <laughs> Went back upstairs. Meanwhile, I'm frantically <laughs> searching on my phone. I like stood out. I, I stood by the window and watched it for a while and. The, I, I was getting nervous, you know, of course the lightning looks really cool, but I was getting nervous because when cars were pulling off the interstate and, like, leaving their cars running in the parking lot to, like, seek shelter in the hotel, like, this one guy had, like, four, like, ATV, like, four-wheelers, like, on the back of a trailer, and he just, like, left everything in the parking lot and runs inside. I was like, so, should we be getting in the bathtub? Like, what What do we do? What's the protocol for tornadoes? And then I look up that Hayes, Kansas, has, don't let this deter you from going to Hayes, but Hayes has, like, higher than the national average of uh, tornadoes. Way higher than Way the higher. national average. Way higher. Like, nine <laughs> times. It's in Tornado Alley. And we were like, why did we stop here? Like, oh, my goodness. But anyway, we, we kept watch we kept watching the news. We the kids of course slept through the whole thing. 
Praise God, they didn't wake up at all. We were like, well, just, we'll just let them sleep if we're not supposed to. Slept through the whole If we're thing. not supposed to get them up, we're not going to get them up because that's crazy. We'll be looking like that mom in the lobby. So <laughs> let's just let them sleep. Yeah, so we didn't wake anybody up. We just went to bed. I think I, I was I waiting. I think by that time, the, the warning had turned into a watch and things had kind of chilled out a little bit. And then it just the crazy thing is that like we watched outside the window and all of a sudden it just like... Calm. Yeah. Like crazy, 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 crazy calm. Nothing. Like nothing had happened. Mm-hmm. And um, I think we, we asked the guy like the next morning or something like, do, how, do, how do people live like this for <laughs> like half the year? And because nobody was concerned. All the native Kansanites were like. Kansanese. Kansanese. Were, Kansans. Uh, Kansans. That's, that's the word. Were, uh, were not concerned at all, like not worried at all. And we were like, I guess you just live in your basement just, for six well, months out of the year. Well, looking back on it, this is probably how people, so we lived in Charleston, South Carolina for a this is prob- probably how people from Northwest, wherever, who, not, who weren't from there felt about tornadoes. Sorry, about hurricanes during hurricane season. How do you live like this? Hurricanes, you, you do have like a week to prepare though. Yeah. And most people don't leave unless it's like higher than a Category 3. Category three or higher, yeah. We evacuated twice. Yeah. Twice because we had really tiny kids. Yeah. Like super babies. From the standpoint of, okay, if the power gets cut for like a day or two, that's really going to throw off our schedule with small kids. So we're going to go away. So we got out of there. But that must must be how people in Charleston feel. Um, Or at the coast in general who aren't used to hurricanes. And my parents lived through Hugo, so. Mm hmm. And we I did mean, too. We were alive. I mean, yes, we were alive, but um, yeah. My parents base it, uh, as I'm sure most people in Charleston do, base it on okay, is it as bad as Hugo? Because we're not going to let you, you know, don't want to go through that again. But yeah, you know, if it's not well, that crazy, so we'll be fine. we lived through the tornado in Hayes, Kansas. Yes, we got it the next morning. Whirlwind on my birthday, um, epic birthday. <laughs> we were okay. Uh, Praise God. Hot-footed it out of Hayes, Kansas. Mm-hmm. Hot-footed it all the way across Kansas. Didn't stop anywhere. I said, Kansas is great. Let's get out of Kansas. And didn't stop anywhere in Kansas. And then crossed over into Missouri. Right? Well, we did stop at a wind turbine. Yeah, that's true. We did. Um, have these giant. These things, things are fascinating. These gigantic yes. wind turbines all over. All over. We, saw, we saw them particularly in Texas and Kansas. I'm sure they're probably in Oklahoma, Iowa, those midwestern states interestingly as well. enough they weren't there weren't any around hayes kansas and now we know why now we know why because they probably get destroyed by 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 tornadoes but so we pulled off the interstate at one point and stopped and got and kind of pulled not not super close we stayed behind the fence whatever whatever and pulled up to a uh to a wind turbine so we could like really get a sense of how big they are and let me let me tell you those jokers are massive um and they move a lot faster than you think, too. You just kind of see them lazily spinning the distance. What you don't realize is how big those those blades, blades are. are. And to, for something that big to be turning that fast, I mean, that thing has, woof, woof. You, you can hear it. Yeah. Like, you know, cutting the wind. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, so that was pretty much it for Kansas. Kansas. A lot of wheat fields, a lot of corn fields, a lot of wind turbines, a lot of tornadoes, a lot of beautiful farms. The route that we took didn't really take us. You know, we had, we were thinking about we didn't stop at the Cosmodrome, Cosmosphere thing. No, oh, I know why. Because our original plan was we were going to be leaving out of Colorado Springs and going through Hutchinson and going to, I think, Wichita. Mm-hmm. Like on, what is that, I-70? Uh, I-, I believe it's I-70. I think it was I-70. Or, or I-40. I think it was I-40. Okay, whatever the one that goes through Hutchinson, Kansas, that one. We were going to go that way. Um, and we ended up, because we left out of Denver like around the outskirts of Denver because we were already um you know an hour and a half north going to that state park we took a different interstate and so we were still going across Kansas just like 2 hours north on a different interstate what was that I24 I70 I24 something like that I um, don't remember Kansas is the sunflower capital of 
I'm going to say the world. Maybe it's of the United States. <laughs> I'm going to say the universe. How about that? <laughs> it's the sunflower capital of the universe, um, but we didn't see a single sunflower. So not to say that they don't exist, but off that interstate, we, we didn't see any. Um, but Kansas is very pretty, very picturesque. Um, so western Kansas was super flat, and then eastern Kansas was interesting because you get those rolling green hills, and we didn't have time to stop in um, Chase, Kansas, where, like, the Flint Hills of Kansas are. They're supposed to be, like, gorgeous. Um, but Kansas was yet again was, one of those places south, where, I wish, where I wish we had time to, yeah. you know, go to Salina, go to Wichita. Maybe spend... We drove through Topeka. Go to the Tall Prairie Grasslands Preserve, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, we, we did drive through Topeka. Um... So I don't know. You know, there's there's cool stuff. Um, after the tornado, we were pretty, to, to be honest, I was like, get me out of Kansas. Yeah, please. Jim was ready to get out of Kansas after the tornado. She, she did not want to spend another night there. In, in the summer, during, you know, tornado season, maybe at a different time, it would be lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally would love to go back during tornado season and reenact the movie Twister from 1996. Which I guess David got his wish because he got to stand there and just be like, wow. It's amazing. amazing. Yeah, terrifying. I mean, have you ever seen the movie Twister with um, <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman? I gotta, I gotta look it up now. All right, who's in that movie? There's some, there's some epic names in that movie. Yeah. Um, Twister. Is it? Is it really? A... If you're a Twister fan, what is your favorite scene in Twister? Twister. <laughs> it's just me that likes that movie. I don't know. It's, it's uh. What is your favorite? Helen scene? Hunt. Okay. She was who was also in Contact. Another great. 90s movie. Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton from Alien. Game over, man! Game over! Uh, Jamie Gertz. Carrie uh, Ells. Ells? Who played Wesley in Princess Bride is the bad guy in Twister. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Of course, you know him. Alan Ruck. Alan Ruck. Do you remember who Alan Ruck was? No. Sorry. Also played Cameron in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh, okay. Todd Field and Jeremy Davies. I feel like there were some other people in there too. Let me see. Who's Todd Field? Todd Field. Uh, Todd Field. Oh no, Jeremy Davies. It's funny that I don't know them by their actual names, but I know them based on the other characters that they play in other movies. Jeremy, uh, sorry, Jeremy Davies was in Lost as well. Let's see what on Jeremy Davies. Lost. Not Penny's boat. No, he played Colonel Upham in Saving Private Ryan. Daniel Faraday. If you remember Lost, he was Daniel Faraday. That guy was also in um in Twister. Hmm. He's from Traverse City, Maryland. Interesting. Cool. Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton, of course, being the two big. Uh, being the two big names there. Bill Paxton actually passed away relatively recently. Uh, Jimmy Gertz. Oh, that's a Jimmy Gertz. It's Carrie Hills. Interesting. I guess I'm just glad that we weren't on the road at night driving through that because... Oh my gosh, that would have been crazy. And I guess we could have been one of those families coming in hot to the hotel parking lot. Yeah. Just run inside. What was Aunt Meg's dog's name in Twister? I have no uh, idea. Name, name Moe's. Interesting. Mose. Interesting. How do you end on Twister? Proper for 10 year olds? What channel is Twister on the night? Does Netflix have Twister? What happened to Joe mom, Joe's mom and Twister? You should read some trivia. See if uh, the audience knows about... Um, like the dog. The dog's, dog's name being dog's Mose. dog's name was Moe's. This came out about the same time. There was a rash of disaster movies that came out in the mid to late 90s. There was Independence Day. There was Deep Impact. When did Armageddon come out? Let's see. I feel like that was the late 90s. Armageddon. 98, yes. Armageddon, Deep Impact. So Armageddon had um, Bruce Willis... And, Don't look at me because I haven't watched and, like uh, any of these movies. What? They had the Aerosmith song. Don't wanna miss a thing. I don't know. 
uh, Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck was in Armageddon. Deep Impact, of course, had Morgan Freeman, and there was like a Helen Hunt type character. Let's see, Deep Impact. I feel like I was watching like, um, uh, oh my gosh, was it Disney and Pixar that did Tarzan with Phil Collins music? I feel like that's yeah. that's what I was watching while this was happening. Like <laughs> Deep Impact had Robert Duvall, Taylor Leone. She was Deep Impact. Oh, Taylor Leone, yeah, she was a reporter lady. Kind of, kind, of, kind of leading lady. Elijah Wood was in Deep Impact? I didn't know that. Well, that's not Elijah Wood. It's Morgan Freeman. Elijah Wood. Was he the kid? Elijah Wood was in Deep Impact. Vanessa Redgrave. Who's this? I'm not sure who it is. Um, so yeah, Deep Impact. Armageddon. Twister. Independence Day. Dante's Peak. This is This is a slightly more obscure one. Dante's Peak. In 97, had Pierce Brosnan. I feel like I have um, seen that one, though. Volcanologist Harry Dalton, played by Pierce Brosnan, and Mayor Rachel Wando, played by Linda Hamilton, finally convinced the unbe- unbelieving populace that the big one is about to hit and that they need to evacuate immediately, only to discover her two, her two children have gone up the mountain to get their grandmother. With Earth Earth's clock racing against him, they must rescue the kids and grandma before the volcano explodes in a fury of flame and ash, a million times more powerful than an atomic bomb. There you go. Linda Hamilton. Will they get Granny out? Jeremy Tune in to Smith. find out. Jimmy Foley. Jimmy Foley. Charlie Hallahan. Paul Dreyfus. Not interesting. Um. So, Dante's Peak was actually based on, loosely, on the town of Flagstaff, because there's, there's Humphrey's Peak that um, Flagstaff sits at the base of, of a mountain called Humphrey's Peak. That's that was a, Mount St. Helens. So no, Mount St. Helens. I mean, no. partially, but it's a small town, you know, sitting at the base of a supposed, supp- allegedly, extinct volcano and that's exactly what Flagstaff is um, you know there are there are a series there's actually a range of extinct volcanoes right there so that's your geography lesson and film lesson for the evening mm-hmm. well I think that's going to wrap us up for this evening um, thank you for joining us for a recap of Colorado and Kansas and next time and 90s disaster movies and 90s disaster movies now listen if you're sitting there yelling at your phone or device wherever you're listening on saying how could you forget about X movie please email us at Team Carter Family Adventures at gmail.com please do email us let me know about whatever movie I've forgotten I probably saw some movie that I totally forgot about I'm trying to think what else you know they re-released the Star Wars movies in the late 90s and I watched they re-released them in the theaters, the special, the, the special editions, and that was really cool. I remember going to see those. Uh, I'm talking about the original trilogy now. They did it in anticipation of the prequels being made. Which is kind of wild, because I feel like they wouldn't do that now. They wouldn't re-release three movies from the late 70s, early 80s, a trilogy of movies, to, to generate interest and public excitement about brand new, like you know I'm trying to think the Clint Eastwood uh, western series you know Fistful of Dollars Good and the Bad the Ugly and for a few dollars more you know if they were going to make another one of those they wouldn't re-release all three of those although, although all three of those are great movies or Good, would they Good and the Bad the Ugly being the best of the three um, classic spaghetti westerns directed by Sergio Leone they I don't think they would release man that would be such a cool idea that they should do what somebody, if they released, somebody get on that. What if they re-released in theaters all three of those classic Clint Eastwood westerns so we could all squint with Clint in the theater? Squint with Clint. <laughs> and then and then in anticipation of them making a new one, because Clint Eastwood's still alive, still making movies, he could he, he could even direct it. <gasps> Go back to Italy, do his he thing. Like the sensei, like the Mr. Miyagi of the mm-hmm. of the movie who gives mm-hmm. some young aspiring cowboy mm-hmm. all the wisdom. You may not know the Dollar Trilogy, Fistful of Dollars, Good and Bad, Good and Bad the Ugly, and for a few dollars more. You may not be familiar with it, but I guarantee that you know the music from it. Good and Bad the Ugly, let's hear it. Wow, wow, wow. 
that 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 right there that's what that's from i guarantee you know the music from it and and the cinematography of the quick the quick tight shots of people's eyes darting back and forth in a western motif that's that's a sergio leone thing yeah almost like a the power almost like a a comic book-esque type type style kind of that that uh 60s batman wham pow thwack yeah almost almost that it's it it's funny but but very cool at the same time so anyway if you don't know those movies go watch them talk to y'all soon have a great evening bye good night